talk about tonight is stirring up your gift. Stir up your gift. Every one of you here has been given something that you can do that no one else can do. And it's on the inside of you. And so what I want you to do is to stir up your gift, okay? So we're going to talk about that really quick. Now, it goes without saying that if... It goes without saying that everybody here, everybody likes to receive a gift. Am I correct? I want to make sure I'm talking to the right, <laughs> the right group of people. Everybody likes to get a gift. And a gift is something you don't work for. It's something you don't earn. It's something that's given to you freely, like our Savior. He was given to us freely. And so that's what a gift is. But also we have to keep in mind that our Heavenly Father has given us gifts, motivational gifts, inspirational gifts, spiritual gifts. He's given us gifts too. And the thing about his gift, the same thing, you don't have to work for it, you don't have to earn it. It's something he gives you freely. It, he gives it to you freely. And the thing about it, he gave it to you before you were born. He gave it to you before. If you go to Jeremiah, the first chapter, Jer Jeremiah, uh, verse 5, it says, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. And I anointed you, appointed you a prophet for a nation. And that is the Lord talking to Jeremiah. And I know a lot of y'all thinking, well, that's Jeremiah. That's not me. But let me tell you something about the principles of Torah. The Lord has no respect of persons, so whatever he says for one, he means it for you too. You may not be a prophet, you may not be an evangelist, or you may be, I don't know. But that's what we're going to talk about today because the Lord has placed something in you that he wants you to do. And the way that you do it is by stirring up your gifts. Okay? Now, you may not be a prophet. You may be uh, a teacher. You know, you may be an evangelist. But the Lord has placed something in you to do, and he did it before you were born. Another thing about the gifts from the Lord is that they're given without repentance. That means he gives it to you, and he doesn't take it back. So, see, if I were to give you this gift, it's nothing in here, just a box, but it's a pretty box, isn't it? If I were to give you that gift, and you made me upset, I probably would take it back. That's what, some, that's what some people do. But the Lord, the gifts that he gives you are that repentance. So if he gave you a gift to sing or a gift to dance, he's not going to take it back. That's what the scripture says. I'm just going to show you where it is. It's in Romans 11:29. He says, for the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. Meaning that what he gives you is for you. Now, whether or not you use it for the kingdom, that's up to you. If he's giving you a gift to sing or a gift to dance or a gift to teach or a gift to motivate people, he's not going to take that gift back. The thing about it, though, he might take his hand up off of it. And it may not bless as many people as it should be blessed because you, you stepped away from the Lord. Okay, so you see people who love to sing, people who love to dance, and they can dance really good, and they, you know, they, that gift is from the Lord. But they can use it for whatever reason they want to use it for. You see people who are, um, are mind readers and palm readers, that's a gift of prophecy. Yes, it is. They've taken that gift that God has given them, and they're making money off it for another reason. We don't want you all to do that. We want you to, the, the gift that the Lord has given you, we want you to use them for the kingdom. Okay, that's another thing that the gift that the Lord gives you, they are for someone else. They are to bless someone else. You all truly blessed us today with your gift of dancing. Wouldn't you all agree? You all truly blessed us. That's a gift from the Lord. Whatever the Lord gives you is to be given out to somebody else. Okay, that's how you know it's a gift from the Lord. Now, the Lord wants all of you to use your gifts that he's given you for him. That's a song that you, were, that you were dancing to, said he's searching all over for someone to love him. When, some, when you love the Lord, the gift that he's given you, you use that gift for him. You use it for the kingdom, to build up the kingdom, to make other people happy, okay? And make other people want to do what you're doing and make other people want to have what you have, okay? That's how you show your love. Now, last week, after, well, the last week or the week before when we had rehearsal here, I asked 
each one of them, well, a couple of them, what did they believe their gifts were? You remember, Coco? You want to share? We have another mic. You changed it? That's fine. It's probably going to change a, a, a lot of times, OK? Yep. You had two? OK, we want to stand up and share? <laughs> you know something? I told uh, Coco this, and I'm just going to share it with, with everybody. I may be wrong, but your grandma will probably put me in if I'm wrong. <laughs> this is a leader. She's a leader. And I, when I first saw her, I said, Coco, I don't know what the Lord is going to use you to lead, but you are a born. She has it in her to lead people. And that's why it's so important for someone who has that gifting to, of leadership to be in the right place under the right leadership with the right direction because a person with that gift can lead some people right down the wrong road because they are powerful in what they do. So that's what I believe the Lord is going to use you to do, Coco. But I believe also you're going to have to get some training. And I told her, I said, you're going to need some training. But I believe that's what the Lord is going to use in some area. OK? All right, you want to share? Is it on? It's on. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh -huh. um, I feel like I have two gifts. One of them is caring, because I care up. a lot after people. Um, and then I also feel like I'm a seer, because when I was young, um, I had this vision where I seen angels going up and down a ladder telling me that I was righteous, I was powerful, um, just telling me every good, positive things that I was going to be when I get older. And um, yeah, that's why I Amen. Thought, like, what's up? <laughs> that is wonderful. Okay, Taylor. I think Taylor said she had something she wanted to share too. What was, your, what was your gifting or your, you believe what the Lord's called you to do? Remember we were talking last week or maybe a week before? Something about making people happy. Believer? Hmm? Uh, my gift is a believer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel like my gift is a believer because the reason why I'm here right now is I believed in myself that I could dance and learn this dance easily. Even when I had a hard time learning this dance, I always came back and mm -hmm. wanted to learn more. And I believe I could do millions of things, art, mm -hmm. I can believe I can sing, do school. Yeah. Um, the reason, God is the reason why we pick up every day and always have like a new, like believing I can do something to that day. So I think my gift is a believer. Yeah, that's a gift of faith. That's a gift of faith. Oh. Yes, you had something to, I forgot. My gift is my smile. It brings joy and happiness to people. Yes. <laughs> All right, now I have somebody else that's, okay. Why do you, see, the things that the Lord has given you, they're for somebody else. Those things that he's placing, and the older you get, the more uh, in tune you become with your gift and they're going to change and you're going to grow in it and it becomes more powerful but you have to stir it up and the scripture that we're going to be looking at is second timothy chapter one verse six through seven and this is paul paul was an apostle do you know what an apostle is maddie do you know that your, your aunt is an apostle yeah apostle claudine lee that's your aunt isn't it she, yeah, she's an apostle. An apostle is someone who establishes order. They establishes other churches. They keep people in line. So an apostle, that's who Paul was. Paul was an apostle. When things were out of order, he would talk to people to get them in order. And so he's talking to Timothy, who was a young person in the Lord. And he told Timothy, he said, therefore, I remind you to stir up your gift. OK? There it is. Stir up, stir up your gift of which God is in the, stir up your gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And I believe that we're going to pray for them today, Pastor. Um, and we're going to lay hands on them and we're going to believe that we're going to stir up the gift that's on the inside of you all, okay? You all have spoken it out, so we're going to believe that we're going to stir up your gift. He said, which is 
which is in you through the land on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, yes. but a power, love, and a sound mind. So I want you to realize that you cannot allow the fear. Like you all know you were a little nervous coming up. I'm a little nervous too. But I, I walk through it, okay? You can't allow fear to take over. Use your, the power and the soundness of your mind to do what the Lord has called you to do. Why do you think so many people never get to their potential in life? Because they allow fear to take over. You don't want, I don't want that to happen, okay? So this is a scripture we're gonna be talking about. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Your gift is the reason you exist. It's the reason God placed, he puts something in you because he had something he wanted to have done in the earth. I think I've asked this question before with you all, but indulge me. Why do you think the graveyards are the richest places in the world? I think I asked y'all that before. I think you forgot. You want to you wanna answer, Maddie? Why do you think the graveyard is the most wealthiest place in the world. Let me go with her first, then I get you. You scared? Oh, that's all right. We're gonna pray for you, girl. You're gonna be okay. Just, just say something. She says she's nervous. You want, you want Coco to go? Okay. Um, because people um, die without showing their gift. Like exactly. They die without the gift being stirred up. Yeah. That's, that's why you see a lot of young people leaving here. And some of those young people who are being shot and being killed or overdosing on drugs, they could have the answer to a lot of things that we're dealing with in life right now. But see, they don't, Maybe nobody laid hands on them and stirred up their gift. Maybe they didn't know they had a gift. They, maybe they didn't know there was a reason why they were here. So they die with the answer on the inside of them. There's people in the grave now that has an answer to cancer, uh, high blood pressure, and everything that we are dealing with. They have the answer. God placed it on the inside of them. But nobody stirred it up. Nobody encouraged them. They allow, they allow fear and not the soundness of their thinking to take over and they lost track and that but you know what the lord is so good he'll raise up somebody else he'll raise but we we want the lord to raise you all up to do what he's called you to do and you know what stirring up your gift is like opening a present it's like opening a present now we've been talking about the gifts and stirring it up and everything does anyone know how to stir up the gift, or what it takes to stir up your gift. There's four things I have here. The first one is you must be born again. You must be born again, and you to be baptized, showing a new beginning. We talked about that last time. Some of, some of them here, I don't know if they're gonna be bold enough today, but they said they want to be baptized. Amen. They said they wanted to be baptized. I didn't ask them. They would say, well, what's that over there? We said that's a, the baptismal pool. And one of them, I'm not going to say, one of the, the leader said it means that <laughs> a new beginning. <laughs> I said, go ahead on. But yeah, so they want to be baptized. So that's the first thing is stirring up your gift to be baptized and to you know, make a, an announcement that you believe in the Lord, that he was he is your Lord and your Savior because you want, to, you want your gift to be stirred up by the Lord, so you need to do what the Lord requires you to do. The next thing is to study the Word, to show yourself what? Approved. The other thing is to do what Yah says. Yah is another name for God, to do what he says, to be obedient, to know is what? The Hebrew scholars, to know is to do. Then you have to practice gratitude. Writing your journals on how grateful you are for the things that the Lord has done for you, okay? And I got some, Regina, can you help me? I got some journals for you all, for you to write in. 
No, what's the first thing you have to do in order to start stirring up your gift? What's the first thing? Be born again, and I hope you all really think about that. Be born again, be, uh, and be, you know, be baptized, study the word, do what the word says, and practice gratitude. Now, in each one of those books, there's a prayer card. Whatever card you got is the one the Lord wants you to have. And whatever's on that card is scripture. Let me show you one. There's scripture I want you to learn. I want you to learn that scripture. That's yours. Whoever, whatever one you got, that's the one the Lord wants you to have. Okay? And those are little cards that I got that contain scripture on the back. Okay? So you take that card, memorize that scripture, it gives, it gives you the place where the scripture is located in the Bible, and that's yours, okay? We're going to talk about that later on, but that's what you need to, to keep, okay? All right? Now, another thing, I'm, a, I'm the kind of person, I'm a visual learner. I learn by seeing it happen. How many people are like that? Well, you have to see it. Well, I'm going to get the younger ones, if y'all can come up here, we're going to bake an imaginary cake, okay? You want to help me bake a cake? Okay, we're going to bake, we're going to bake an imaginary cake. Oh, I forgot, Regina, we got, um, we got some pins for y'all, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's imaginary, it's not real. We're going to have a real cake later, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, before we do that, come around on this side. Come around here. Yeah. Okay, we're going to bake an imaginary cake. Now, when we do, when, whenever you make a cake, what do you do? You take all the ingredients, and you put all the ingredients in the bowl. Is that right? Okay, so we got the ingredients here. Okay, now, Cassidy, you want to put the flour in? This is the flour. It's imaginary, so y'all just keep. Okay, you want to put the flour in the bowl? Okay, now who wants to put the sugar in? Just put it in there. Okay, and Brianna, I mean, Brianna, <laughs> you want to put in the milk? Okay. Madison, you want to put in the eggs? Y'all yeah, show them what y'all putting in. I, I took time to write it out. <laughs> Let people see it. Okay. Okay, who want to put the butter in? Okay, put the butter in. And then we got some kind of flavoring. Okay, let her put the flavoring in. Show them what you're putting in. Okay. Now, if we were actually doing a, a cake, now what would you do next? But let me just, let me just do this, this. Let's do it like this. Before we do that, if we, if we were going to bake a real cake, we know what we would do next. But I'm going to tell you, just take this and pour that in there like that. Pour all the ingredients into the pan. Thank you. Now, if we were to do that without stirring it up, we wouldn't have a good cake, would we? We would have a mess. That's what happened with a lot of us. We got the gifts, but they're not stirred up, so we got a mess. <laughs> thank y'all, thank y'all for getting it because I didn't know how that was going to come off. But so what do you do? Actually, what you're supposed to, you're supposed to take it and stir it up. And that's what the Lord, God has put so many ingredients on the inside of us, and all he wants us to do is stir them up. Just stir up the gifts that he's, he's get, putting on the inside of us because if we don't, we will not reach the total potential that we, we have on the inside of us, just like that cake will not reach its total potential because it's not stirred up. So we have to stir up what the Lord has placed on the inside of us. On, other than that, we have a big mess. And we got a lot of, a lot of mess. That's, yeah, okay. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to. So no, we wouldn't just put it in the pan. We would actually stir everything up like the Lord has asked us to do. So nothing happens correctly until it's stirred up. Okay, so you all stir it up. Just stir it up. Okay. All right, 
Now pour it into the pan. We're gonna pretend like it's all stirred up and it's looking good and we're gonna pour it into the pan. Now, after you pour it into the pan, what, what do we do? We put it in the oven. We put it in the oven. I don't have a, a pretend oven, so. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> okay, you all can sit down now. Thank you so much. You know something, they may not remember a lot of things that we talked about right now, but you know what? They're gonna remember standing up in front of the church, stirring up some make-believe stuff, and then one day, it's gonna hit them. Oh, I know what she meant when she said, stir up my gift. She was trying to show us that the Lord has put stuff in us. So that's a good thing about um, using your imagination. That's how I do, I mean, I'm like a child when it comes to imagination. That's how I see things. So the next thing to do is you put it in the oven. And a, a good, one thing about your gift being stirred up, especially with young people, when you decide that you're gonna make the Lord your savior, you're gonna get baptized, and you're gonna study his word, and you're gonna do what he says, it's like being in the oven when, because your other friends don't receive it. They might make you feel funny. They may call you a Jesus freak. They might put you down. So that feel, that's like being under pressure. That's what it's like being in the oven. It's like you, you're uncomfortable because you're confused now because you know you want to serve the Lord, but your friends are all against you. But you know something? You have to stick with it. Amen. You have to stay with it because on the other side of being in the oven, you come out and you're ready to be served. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You are ready to be served to, for people and they can, you know, uh, grow from you and learn from you because you, you got the word on, in, your, in your heart. You got the word in your soul and you're able to share with other people. You're able to be given out. Yeah. Okay, so that's what it actually means to have your gift stirred up, to be um, put in the oven, to be getting ready for the Lord to use you, okay? And know that when you're in the oven, it's not gonna be pretty. You're gonna lose some friends. You're gonna lose some people who you thought were your friends. People are gonna call you all kind of names. They're gonna be against you. But you know what the Word of God says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, seeing that his divine power has granted to us all things that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called you by his own glory. That's a lot of words, but all he's saying is that everything that the Lord has placed on the inside of you is everything you need. Everything that you need to do what the Lord has called you has already been placed inside of you. It was placed inside of you before you were born. Before you were born, he said he knew you. He knew you, Coco. He knew that he, he, what he called you to do. He knew you, Imani. He knew you, and he knew what he called you to do. It's up to you to open the gift that he's given you and use it. Okay, Taylor? Same thing for you, all of you, all right? The Lord has called all of you. Anaya, the same for you. The Lord has a reason for you to be where you are and to do what he's called you to do. Okay, don't give up, don't give in. You stand firm on what you do know. Anaya, I'm not going to embarrass her, I'm not going to actually stand up. Her desire is to teach the word of Lord. That's her desire. And I've told uh, each one of them that whatever the Lord has called you to do, if you stick, stick with us here, we want to work you, with you into make it come to pass, okay? And, and see, studying the word and being born again doesn't mean you have to be here at every service at every time the church door open. Sometimes we might just go out to lunch. We might just hang out and do some things. You know, Pastor Horace may have some things on his mind that he wants to do with us as a group. Okay, so those are the things that we do when we try to get others to come into the kingdom of God. It's, all, it's not all about being, um, you know, in the church all the time. We are the church. Okay? So, as I promised, I'm not going to be before you long. So, we're going to recap. Can anybody tell me what does it take to stir up your gift? One thing. All right, Coco. Be born again. What's another thing, Amani? Can you think of another one? St 
Study the word of God. Third, study this word. You got one, Taylor? Be, yeah, that's what your journals are for. I want you to start today or tomorrow. I want you to write five things that you're grateful for every day. And the older ones, you, your, your journals are a little more um, advanced. It gives you kind of imprompt, I mean, prompts to get you to start writing. But I want you to write things that you're grateful for. It could be something simple. It could be something that you, know, you get up and you can see the sun shining through your bedroom window. That's what I mean. I don't mean, you know, you have to be something grand and, you know, big or anything like that because the Lord wants you to be grateful for the small things. Okay? All right, Cassidy? Can you write five things that you're going to be grateful for, okay? You, may, you might say, I'm grateful that my little brother's here with me today. Or I'm grateful that my sister's here. I'm grateful that Miss Max picked me up for church this morning. <laughs> Whatever it is, you write it in your journal, Okay? All right. Okay. I want to say that any, if any of you that are with us today, first of all, how, did you get anything? Did anybody get anything? Did you, did you receive anything? Did you understand anything? What, okay, well, let me hear you say a, a loud amen. amen. Inside voice. I want to hear your inside voice. Amen. Oh. You know, louder than that. Well, I want to, I mean, I'm sorry. I want the outside voice. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Regina. Sometimes my mind gets a little twisted. I want the outside voice. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank all y'all for, and the parents for bringing the kids and, and just being a part of all of this, what we're doing here today. And I just want to take some time right now to, just thank the Lord for the opportunity to come before, before you all and to bring forth what he's given me in my heart to do. And I'm praying that the young people here today will not just be this, their last time coming, that you will be con consistent in coming and being a part of what we're trying to do. Amen? All right. Well, I'm not going to...